Good afternoon, Internet. Mm, yay, kitties. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about my um, some of the ideas that I've had for the background of... You know, that looks like a really nice day outside. I don't think this video is going to go very far unless if I do something about this. One moment. Isn't this so much better? I get to stand outside, I get to hear the lovely birds chirping everywhere. Horribly distracting, but, well, thought I would have a little change of scenery today. So, um, I was going to talk about my role-playing system. Um, not really my system so much as the world that I primarily run in. Uh, the world is called Sharna. Sharna is a made-up name. It was a recommendation from somebody making up something. It doesn't actually mean anything. It is not symbolic or anything like that. Um, the world itself is... Am I standing in an ant nest? No. No, I'm not standing in a net nest. Um, the world itself, um, the way that I've come up with some of the ideas behind the world is that I've grabbed lots of itty bitty little bits of culture from, we'll just go with a very large number of sources. Um, there's symbolism for practically every major religion on earth somewhere inside of Sharna. Um, everything from Zoroastrianism to modern Christianity to Islam to Judaism and pretty much everything in between. <clears throat> Sharna is a bit of a mismatch of religions. Um, the creation myth is... Uh, I can't remember exactly where I got part of the idea of the creation myth, but the creation myth of all of the sapient races of Sharna are basically that of a stable time loop. Um, I'll link to the TV Trips article in the description as to what I'm talking about, but a stable time loop in general is what happens when you mess around with time travel, but your universe is of the it's always been this way type of thing. So for instance, if a time travel were to go into the past and try to change something, it's actually one, impossible to change, or two, it was actually already changed to the begin with even in the time traveler's history. Uh, stable time loops are the way Sharna itself stays where it's at, basically. Um, there's a giant stable time loop with creation of the world, or creation of the people of the world. Um, the father time and birth mother have all of their children, each of their children being the paragons of each of the sapient races of the Sharna universe, and something happens in the future. I'm intentionally not giving away spoilers, but something happens in the future where they actually have to go back in time. So what ends up happening is that all of the paragons of each of the Sharna races go back into random sections of time, thus being begatting each of their respective races. Uh, think of it kind of like an Adam and Eve style of mythos, only there's only one, usually. There's a couple of races where there's multiple. You really don't want to know. Um, so a lot of the campaigns have to do with, uh, the more major campaigns, the world-shattering campaigns, are trying to mess around with that stable time loop. It's actually already happened once. That stable time loop I just described is not the original stable time loop. Yeah, stable time loop really hard to say when you're doing this out loud with lots of distractions. Um, the one that I just described is actually the second stable time loop of Sharna. The first stable time loop of Sharna was obliterated during the events of my FFRPG campaign, back when the campaign world was a Final Fantasy RPG. Um, there's actually multiple other stable time loops. There's even a stable time loop that reinforces the stable time loop. It's a series of circles. Kind of like the internet being a series of tubes. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about this place. Uh, I am actually in a, well, sort of park, sort of preserve. Um, to my left, I think you can partially see it in the background back there. Um, that is actually Prairie Restoration Lands for Elver Park. Elver Park being the park that's right across the street from where I currently live. Um, and the reason why they're restoration lands rather than actual prairie land preserve is because what you see behind me, that nice little green mound type of thing, yeah, that's a former landfill. Yep. Um, as far as I can tell, I think it's been a landfill for longer than I've been alive, so this is really former, but I honestly don't know. I somehow doubt the housing that you can might be able to see off a little bit over in that direction. I doubt the housing was there when the landfill was, and the housing is much older than I am. Um, 
This neighborhood was built in the 60s. Um, the neighborhood that you sort of see in the background over in that direction, that's actually the neighborhood I'm moving to. Um, if it was possible, I would be able to pan in that direction. There's a bit of a mound in the way, but you would actually see where I currently live. I have an almost direct line of sight. In fact, I think my laptop actually has Wi-Fi reception out here. I'm not joking when I say I really do provide Wi-Fi access to a third of the park. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful day outside, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this short and do some editing so I can enjoy more of the day. It is simply gorgeous. It's a little bit over 20 degrees Celsius, or right around 73-ish Fahrenheit, I think. Um, mostly, oh, I would say very few clouds in the sky. Uh, it's a little on the hazy side, it's a little bit on the dry side. In any case, enjoy internet.